All right, so we're going to talk a bit about how to turn a molecule from sort of this more typically encountered sort of wedge dash type representation to a Fisher projection. Okay, so here we have a molecule here. Okay, it's drawn in the wedge dash type conformation with our main chain along the flat part of the um, screen. Okay, we have this OH group in the wedge and this fluorine in the wedge, so those are both coming at you. And then we have the CL group back. Okay, and so we can sort of represent that through this molecule here. Okay, where we have the OH group, okay, and the fluorine group. Okay, so OH group's red, fluorine group's yellow, and the CL group's green. So the OH and the fluorine are forward, and then the um, CL group is back, okay? So key thing is, most of the time in organic chemistry, we represent things with sort of the flat line structure, right? Where we have two bonds, okay, along the plane of the page, and we have one going uh, out, you know, at you and one going back, right? So we represent the one going at you with the wedge, okay, to capture the three-dimensional tetrahedron. The one going back we represent through dashes. Okay, key thing is we have to turn this comp structure here to sort of the Fisher type conformation. In the Fisher projection, we have two bonds going back, okay, these are in the vertical position and two bonds going forward. Okay, so we have two dashes and two wedges in the Fisher type one. And the difference really is a rotational change of perspective. Okay, so we just rotate the group around to the point where we have two going back and two going forward. Okay, so how do we do this? How do we turn this compound here, okay, into the Fisher projection? Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do Okay, so you have to keep in mind, we're going to typically represent the main chain, okay, in the sort of vertical position for a Fisher projection. Okay, so to achieve that, we're going to want to rotate all of our carbon groups so that they all eclipse each other. That's the thing we're going to want to do. So how can we do that? We can do this through a series of 180 degree rotations. In this case here around this bond here and around that bond there, okay. What that does is it allows us to have all of the carbons going back, okay, and then the other groups will be going forward. And that's what we're gonna do in the Fisher projection. That'll put all the carbons along the vertical. We're gonna imagine that all of those tetrahedral sites are going back in sort of the vertical direction, and then the horizontal ones are going forward. Okay, so to do that, we're gonna to wanna to generate the eclipse the fully eclipsed confirmation for all of the carbon. So first thing we're going to do, okay, is we're going to take our molecule and we're going to rotate 180 degrees around this carbon-carbon bond, okay? And what that does, okay, is it puts the methyl group, okay, from here up to there, okay, so that's when we rotate around this carbon-carbon bond. But in the process, okay, the CL group here was back, okay, pointing back. Now it's actually going to be pointing forward, okay. So we do a 180 degree, things that are back and now forward, okay. Same way we can do another 180 degree rotation now around this carbon-carbon bond, okay. In the process, okay, we again put our CH3 group up, Okay, here our OH group was forward when we do a 180 degree rotation around that carbon-carbon bond. Now our OH group is back. Okay, so this is what we mean by the fully eclipsed conformation. And at each carbon here, right, this one here, this methyl group and this carbon here would both be back if we're looking at it from this perspective. Same way as we look at and the molecule from this perspective, okay, these two carbons will be back. Same way if you look at it from this perspective, these two carbons will be back. Now, I always find it helpful in the Fisher projection to actually do a quick rotation, okay? So we're gonna rotate this molecule around, okay? And all we're going to do, okay, we're just gonna rotate it, okay, just to slightly change the way we represented the molecule. Okay, we haven't moved any bonds, we haven't done any rotations of the 
carbon-carbon bonds or any bond breaking or making, we just rotated our perspective of the molecule, okay? So now we're looking at it from this perspective here. We sort of have this still CL group wedged, fluorine group wedged, OH group is dashed, okay? So CL and fluorine are both going at you, okay? And OH group is going back. So at this point here, we're going to imagine looking at the molecule from this perspective here. Okay, so looking at it from this perspective here, or effectively looking at the molecule here. Okay, and when we do that, we can actually see our Fisher projection quite nicely. Here we have one, two, three, four, five carbons. So we're going to represent this in the vertical. We see that each one of them, the carbon groups are back. Okay, it doesn't matter which one we look at. Okay. And what we notice here is we look at it from this perspective here, okay? CL group, okay, is on the left side. So is the fluorine group, but our OH group goes the other way and that's on the right side there. Now we should be able to see that quite nicely from our Fisher projection. So the key thing is we're gonna to want to rotate our carbon-carbon bonds to make a fully eclipsed confirmation Okay, and then we're going to want to look at it from this type of perspective, okay? And in doing so, we'll be able to convince ourselves, we look at it, in this case, you know, we're on the right looking left, okay? And if we look at it here, all the wedged groups are going to be on the left side of the molecule, and the dash groups are going to be on the right. We represent that here through our Fisher projection. Hopefully we've found this little video helpful, and thanks a lot.